What is up, college basketball fans and fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos, and welcome to another edition of Coos' Corner, your go-to channel for college sports with a heavy dose of West Virginia Mountaineers. This is my first basketball video where I'm going to review the West Virginia basketball season, give you my uh, overview of the season, how I think West Virginia is going to finish, and then I'm also going to preview the, this week's games between West Virginia and the Oakland Golden Bears and the Pitt Panthers. Before I get into that, I asked if you haven't yet, please hit that red subscribe button. Give me the thumbs up if you like my content. And if you're new to YouTube and you don't quite know how it works, the red subscribe button, it's absolutely free. And all it does is it gets you easier access to my videos. And if you hit the notification bell along with it, it will actually notify you every time I post a video. That's all it is. It doesn't cost you a thing. Now let's get on with the show. As I look over West Virginia's schedule this year, I see probably 17 to 18 wins here for this year. Uh, you know, you can pretty much guarantee a 20-win season would get them in the NCAA tournament. Uh, I don't, I don't see them getting. They have a chance to get to 20, but I don't really see it this year. They just, they got a tough schedule, especially in the Big 12. And, and keep in mind, they lost an NBA player in Deuce McBride and an All First Team Big 12 performer in Derek Culver. Our two leading scorers from last year's team are gone. Our leading rebounder from last year's team, gone. Arguably our best on-ball defender from last year's team, gone. The guy they looked to at the end of the games to make shots, gone. So, you know, that, that you don't, it's not easy to replace guys who contributed that much to your team and were that and, and were your biggest contributors, especially on the offensive side. Now, when you look at the schedule here, you've got obviously Oakland and Pitt first. Uh, I expect them to win both of those games, though I don't think Pitt's going to be an easy one. Then they go to Charleston, South Carolina to compete in the Charleston Classic Tournament with Elon, Clemson, Boise State, Marquette, Ole Miss, Temple, and St. Bonaventure. Got some good teams in that tournament. St. Bonaventure is probably going to be an NCAA tournament team this year. They've got some, some transfers who came over from some Power 5 schools. They're expected to be really good. Obviously, we know Marquette's good. They're now coached by Shaka Smart. We know how good of a coach he is. He's given West Virginia fits over the years when he was at Texas. Elon should be a win for the Mountaineers. You know, Temple. You know, Temple's been known to have a really good basketball team. Ole Miss, SEC team, be tough. So there's a lot of good, a lot of good teams in that tournament. So that's going to be a tough one. Then after that, they have Eastern Kentucky at home. That should be a win. They have Bellarmine, who I, I'll be honest, I've never heard of. I'm going to have to do some research on that one, but that should be a win. They're coming to Morgantown. Radford's coming to Morgantown. Now, that'll be an interesting game. Radford is now coached by former Mountaineer Darius Nichols. So, Darius, you know, Darius is going to bring his Radford Highlanders to Morgantown, but that should be a win for the Mountaineers. Then the Mountaineers have to play UConn at home on December the 8th. That's going to be a tough one. UConn, you know, we all know about UConn and their, and their history there. Then you got Kent State should be a win at UAB. In Birmingham should be should be a win, but you know there again it's not a gimme. Youngstown State's coming to Morgantown, and then they get into Big 12 play. So they should go into Big 12 play with about eight or nine wins already. But then Big 12 play gets tough, man. I mean, they start the season out with two games in a row on the road at Texas and at TCU. Uh, some of the notable games: Kansas comes to Morgantown on February 19th. WVU goes to Kansas on January January 15th. Then they turn right around and play Baylor at home on January 18th. And we all know Baylor's the defending national champs. Then they have to go to Texas Tech on the 22nd of January. I mean, you've got, listen to their stretch, starting January 15th. At Kansas, Baylor at home, at Texas Tech, Oklahoma at home. I mean, holy cow. Uh, and, you know, Oklahoma State's expected to have a good team this year. So they're, you know, that's going to be a tough, that's going to be a tough matchup for West Virginia this year. And then they got the SEC Big 12 Challenge against Arkansas in Fayetteville on the 29th of January. And we all know West Virginia has not performed well in that classic over the years. They, they, for whatever reason, they normally lay an egg in those games. I don't know if it's because it's right in the middle of conference play or what, but man, they don't do well at all. I think they've only won a couple of those over the years. But Texas Tech comes to Morgantown on February 5th. 
West Virginia goes to better on January 31st. So just, uh, and then the Big 12 tournament will be the week of March 9th through the 12th. But, I mean, you look at the Big 12 schedule, I mean, West Virginia, there's not a lot of gimme wins in there. Should beat TCU twice. Uh, will probably beat Kansas State at least one time, maybe twice. Iowa State should beat them twice, but, you know, none of these are gimme's. Oklahoma State's going to be good. Oklahoma's going to be good, although they will have a new coach this year because Lon Kruger retired. Uh, we all know Baylor's going to be good. We all know Texas Tech's going to be good, and Texas will be good. Kansas is Kansas. So, uh, I mean, it's going to be an exciting year about more Mountaineer basketball. Uh, and of those games, like I said, I expect about a 17 to 18 win season. Hoping for better than that, but that's my expectations. And probably a uh, probably a seven or eight seed in the NCAA tournament, and maybe get one win in the tournament. That's that's my expectations this year. I'm not, uh, you know, I'm trying to be realistic. I hope I'm wrong, and I hope they perform even better than that. But uh, you know, keep in mind, like I said, we're placing two two stars, and that's not easy to do. Now let's get into this week's games. First, you got the Oakland Golden Bears out of Detroit, Michigan. Oakland finished runners-up in the Horizon League last year. They're expected to contend for the Horizon League title again this year, possibly for a spot in the NCAA tournament. They're going to have arguably the two top players in the Horizon League on the team this year. The return of point guard Jalen Moore, who led all of Division I in assists last year and led Oakland in scoring at about 17.9 points a game. And then they have a transfer named Jamal Kane, who transferred in from Marquette. He played 20. He started in 26 games for Marquette last year, averaged 9.6 points a game, and he's he's a grad transfer. He's expected to be uh, arguably the top player on this Oakland team. So watch out for him. Now they did lose a couple guys that transferred out. One of those being Daniel Oladapo, who's actually who actually transferred to Pitt. So West Virginia will probably still see him Friday night. Uh, he was actually the second leading scorer from last year's team. But they, they expectations are Kane will more than fill those shoes and may even be better than Oladapo was. Now, they they did lose their exhibition game to Eastern Michigan uh, a few days ago. So I do expect that West Virginia should win this game and should win it by double digits. But they've got to be careful because it's not going to be a cakewalk. Now, let's look at Friday night's opponent, the Pitt Panthers. Go ahead and cue Sweet Caroline, baby. What? We all know what lyrics we sing to that song. I'll keep it clean for my fans. I'm not going to sing it for you. But we all know what it is. Pitt backyard brawls coming to Morgantown in basketball. But Pitt's facing some adversity right now. Some breaking news. Well, it's not really breaking, but some news coming out of Pittsburgh today, actually. Uh, Monday. This is Monday, November the 8th. Some news broke uh, today. That Pitt's leading scorer, Ethel Horton, has been suspended indefinitely from the team. He got in trouble with the law over the weekend. This is all alleged, but reports are saying that he allegedly may have assaulted a police officer during the incident. So he is facing some very serious charges, some felony charges. So more than likely, he will not be back on the team. And he's definitely going to be out uh, a while and will definitely be out for the WVU game. Their second leading scorer from last year, Nike Sabande, out with a torn ACL. And then guard Jamarius Burton has also out with a knee injury. He, I think he is expected to return this season, but he will not be back in time for the, for the WVU game. So there's three starters that won't be in this game that we're expected to be. So they've got nine scholarship players right now still available. They have a walk-on that they put in the rotation so they can have ten players. But you think about this. If all three of those guys that are out were expected expected to be in the rotation and likely some of these guys that have replaced them in the rotation probably would not have been in the rotation before so they're likely not going to have a lot of depth so West Virginia should be able to beat Pitt but Pitt does have a sophomore point guard named Femi Odukale and I hope I've got his last name right they say he brings a lot of energy to the floor the team really uh, feeds off of that energy they say he's a great leader they had an exhibition game a few days ago against Gannon, and he scored 20 points, had seven rebounds, and dished out three assists with zero turnovers. So he's a good player. So he, he's going to be he could be a difference maker for Pitt. Hopefully, Kedrian Johnson, who's West Virginia's starting point guard, will be able to use his quickness. 
to help slow down the pit point guard. So it ain't gonna be a cakewalk. But it's still, you know, they're still a good Power Five program. They're coached by Jeff Capel, who's a good, experienced coach, who, who Huggins knows all too well from his days at Oklahoma. So it's gonna be, it should be a good game. You know, two teams with new, new faces on the team, and you know, we'll see. This week will tell us a little bit about what this team's capable of this year. I'll, I expect Tash Sherman to have a monster year. I expect him to be one of the top scorers in the Big Twelve, if not in the country. But I just don't know that West Virginia is going to be able to rebound the ball as well as they like to. And I don't think their defense is going to be as good as Hugs likes with this team this year. I do think they'll be able, I do think West Virginia will shoot the ball well. But in games where the shot's not falling, I'll be, I'm going to be concerned because I don't know how else they're going to get their points. They don't have anybody that scores inside like a Derek Culver did. Most of their players are jump shooters. Not, you know, not, don't have any great post players this year like we've had in the past, so that you know, that could be challenging. If we play a team that's really good in the post, that could be troublesome for the Mountaineers this year. So, well, listen, let me know in the comments what you think about these two games coming up this week. Do you think Mountaineers win the backyard brawl? And also let me know what you think about this year's team as a whole. How many games do you see the Mountaineers winning this year? And do you think they make the NCAA tournament this year? Let me know in the comments. I hope you liked the video. If you did, give me that thumbs up, please. And don't, like I said before, don't forget to subscribe. It's free. Please share this with your friends. Let them know about me. Thank, thank you for tuning in. And until next time.